My name is Sebastian and in this video I will show you which keyboard layout I'm using as a software developer. So I'm originally from Germany and if you had a look at all the other keyboard layouts except the US one, then you might have seen, well, those folks don't really like programming or, you know, typing these special characters that we actually need as programmers all the time, such as curly braces or brackets and quotes and all of these things. And that's certainly an issue and that's certainly a thing, which is why I'm as a developer using the US international keyboard layout with alt graphics and no dead keys. I know that's quite a thing to say and there's a reason why I'm doing that. The keyboard looks as follows. Now that's quite overwhelming at first, but basically what you do, you have the possibility to type um, all graphics and then say, I would like to have some special characters. So it's basically US international keyboard layout with alt graphics and no dead keys, something like this. And what it does, it is basically a US keyboard layout with all of these special characters, but also the possibility to type extra special characters with alt graphics and without dead keys. So first of all, what is a dead key? Let's start uh, with the end. A dead key is a key where typically you uh, type something like the single quote, double quote, or back ticks, or these characters, where in a lot of keyboards out of the box, nothing happens if you press them once, and you have them either, well, to press them twice, and then you have uh, two of these appearing, or you have to press them and then some space, where you only get a single key. But you see, I don't have that. This is kind of confusing what I'm explaining, so don't use them, use no dead keys. The reason for why dead keys might uh, exist is that if you press, for example, double quote and an A, then you get something like this. But as you will see, there is a better way. So first of all, that's one thing. And then using alt graphics, that just makes it um, better to press special characters. Now, if you're a developer, I really advise you to switch your keyboard layout to one that is based on a US keyboard layout. Now, if like myself, you come from Europe, you might say, impossible or das geht nicht. But I will tell you that it is possible and that it makes actually a lot of sense to type most of these things just in a US based way where you have easy access to the special characters like curly braces, uh, brackets and uh, quotes and all of these things that we constantly need as developers, but still that you're able to press all of your umlauts and auxons and all of these things that I don't know how to uh, pronounce even. So what you can do is that you have the possibility, we'll show another keyboard overlay here, uh, what I'm pressing, to say, well, for example, if I would have like to have lowercase or a umlaut to press alt graphics and then just the Q here in this uh, case, or for this auxon, I think it's called, uh, type with an A, or, you know, the sharp S, for that. So, you know, all of these things can then be just accessed quite simply with pressing this alt key. And you see, it's not only the ones that you typically would use in your language, but many more. So, you know, if you have something like a long German word that you would like to type, so this uh, definitely works in that regard. Or if you, you know, have some other languages, so this just is very nice to. Um, combine that with just any things that you know you would like to uh, have in this regard. So I think that's just kind of cool to press them without actually changing anything. You don't need to change the lay layout. You don't need to search for these uh, special characters. You have them available, you know, just as um, at your fingertips with creating another layer. In this case, by pressing alt graphics that you can uh, do. So here you see that this works, you know, with many uh, more uh, things that typically you don't even need in your, you know, typical um, language life. But it is just really cool that this is possible to press them as such. And even some things like some other characters that you might uh, want to press and so on and so forth. So this is just kind of cool to be able to press them as well. You can have a look at uh, this layout here, how this works. It's quite easy to switch them in a Linux based system. It's a little bit more complicated to switch that on a Windows system as always, especially with removing no, uh, the dead keys. But this really helps to just be more able to type all of these things just in an easier way. And needless to say, then it really enables you to press well all of these um, 
characters that you need all the time just easier because for me I would like to optimize for them and once you know once in a while I actually don't type that much uh, German or other languages but once in a while I can just do so by hitting alt graphics and for me this is a better trade-off because I mostly code or I want to optimize for coding so I claim for most developers this trade-off makes sense if that is not enough for you, if you use some other keyboards, for example, a Cyrillic, then you definitely have to be able to change the keyboard, which you can um, always do with some shortcuts in all of the um, operating systems. But I would advise you that for a Latin based keyboard, you use this one. Otherwise, it just gets confusing as well if you then switch keyboards and you just used to pressing other keys. And this just adds more to this energy level that is required in order to type. So with a little bit of effort, you can actually use this keyboard and get used to that. As for switching, I know this involves a little bit of effort. So for me, it took like around two weeks to get used to a US-based keyboard, especially where all of the special characters are located. But I can really tell it pays off. And I see this as a somewhat long-term investment in your developer productivity. If you're more interested in that topic, you might want to check out a course I have on developer productivity linked down below. And if you found this helpful, I would really appreciate a like. And you can also comment down below which is or was the keyboard that you first started out with. If it's not a US based one, that's kind of obvious. But for all of the other countries, I'm interested on where you first learn how to program on which keyboard layout. So write that into the comments. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.